Good afternoon. Welcome to Bible Essential here at Christ Baptist Church. We thank you for joining in with us every Wednesday afternoon in our time of review, study, and uh, I've, we've been blessed this month as we've had the ministers of Christ Baptist come forth with critical elements that are inherent inside of this Lenten season. Let's pray. God, we thank you, Father, for this another day that we have to come and study your word. We ask you, Father God, to continue to bless us and keep us under your watchful care. And Lord, I ask you now in the name of your son, Jesus, open the eyes of our understanding and help us, God, as we are effective teachers of your word. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. In this Lenten season, another critical element that makes up the season is that of giving. Uh, more specifically, uh, in terms of alms giving. Uh, which means donating money, uh, goods to the poor, or performing other acts of, of charity. Giving is a witness to fraternal charity, or better expressed, it's expressive brotherly love. Whenever we give to meet other people's needs, it expresses the love of Christ that's in us to our fellow brothers. And our fellow brothers, our neighbors, people are not people who live next door. You know that. We learned that in the parable of the Good Samaritan. It is wherever help is needed. It is a work of justice that is pleasing to God. This giving can be in the form of, of, of donating our time. It could be in the form of donating our treasure. It could be even in the form of donating our talent. That we could benefit someone else. We could do something that would help someone else in their life. To many aspirants of full Lenten celebrations, to those denominations that carry it all the way out from the ashes on the head to everything, the focus of giving is toward giving up in those systems. Therefore, you have them giving something up for Lent. They will cease uh, eating food or cease doing certain activities or cease, cease wearing, going to the movies, watching television. They'll give something up during this this season. And in fact, what they're trying to do is remove the luxuries of life. They may even go into a period of fasting uh, during this time. They're giving something up and they believe that this is a, a replication of the actions of Jesus, as, particularly in his journey as he was taken into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit in Matthew chapter 4. He was in the desert for 40 days and he did not eat. And for, so you're giving something up. You see, just giving something up is temporary. When we are engaged in self-giving, it does something different. It, 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 it helps us connect more effectively and lovingly with other people when we're involved in self-giving. So I want you to consider for this Lenten season, as we are talking about giving, our, our lesson, our thoughts we're going to raise of the course of our lesson today is that how much time do we spend in self-denial? How much time do we spend in self-giving rather than just giving something up? How much time do I spend with God where I was in self-denial and watchfulness and prayer where during that time that I'm with God that I'm able to even start to discover who I am? This, this idea of self-giving is something that Jesus did to a masterful level. Jesus stopped and he touched people that had need. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about what am I going to give in order that other folk can benefit. Jesus, Jesus would ask them. He'd talk to them and ask them what, what they needed from him. And then the Bible says he would meet their needs. Not only in loving ways. Sometimes he did it in great miraculous ways. Jesus would meet the needs that people had. These weeks and days leading to Resurrection Sunday ought to serve as a time of preparation of readiness for every one of us to accept the life of Christ in all of its fullness. He sacrificed his life for you and I, for the whole world, for a sinful mankind. How can I prepare myself to receive the fullness of what Jesus has done and who he is? With Christ, giving his life in exchange for our lives, he purchased the eternal life for us with his own blood. Since he died for us and was buried 
because of us. When he rose, we rise with him. How can I come to a place of like giving up things about me so that I can get to a place of self-denial, so I can get to a place of self-giving for Christ? In the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, we have this written. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. What a great text there in Colossians. Paul's premise for this text, he established uh, back in Colossians 2.20. And the premise is that the Colossians have died with Christ. Therefore, if they trust the finished work of Christ and live as Christ have purposed in his word for them to live, then they are in Christ. And being in him, they are following the mandates of God rather than just human religious regulations. There's a danger, beloved. We can get trapped into following human religious regulations and thinking that is pleasing to God. God wants us to die to self. He wants us to self-give through self-denial and in giving us up who we think we are, that is what pleases God as we walk closer with God. So Paul opens this text with a premise. If then, stop. His conclusion of the rest of what he's going to say is residing in if then. If then you were raised with Christ, if you and I were raised with him, and it connects back to Colossians 2.18, connects back to Colossians 2.23, as he, he, there he condemned the fleshly mind. If then I'm no longer living according to the fleshly mind. If then I'm not trying to satisfy my flesh. If then I am raised with Christ, I, my life stands in contrast to, this, to what it was. And there's a new premise for my living. My premise is I am in Christ. I died to self. If you have been once for all raised up together with Christ, as, as he writes in, in, in Romans chapter 6, verse 14. And so the, the symbolism there is that when we are baptized, we are taken down into the water. That's being buried. When we are brought up out of the water, we are resurrected. That's the symbolism. We are resurrected to a new life. We died to self. Our life is now hid in Christ. And we're resurrected to a new life. And by turning away from uh, unfulfilling habits that we performed in our lives throughout the year, uh, we, we find ourselves, we can be uh, reunited with his love uh, as we turn back to him. There are some things that you and I have tried in the course of the year, they didn't satisfy. We turn our lives to Christ, he will always satisfy. We can let him completely overtake us. We can allow Christ to have the rule, the dominion rule over our lives and let his love shine in every aspect of our living. Since we are risen with Christ, we should set our minds not down here on the earthly plane. We should set our mind above. Things above, he says in verse 1. In other words, we have to get to a place where we let our earthly practice be worthy of our heavenly position. Who I say I am, I am worthy to stand before God, to come face to face with Christ at, at sitting on the right hand of God. For once I were dead, you and I, we were dead in our trespasses and sins, Ephesians chapter 2. But now we are dead to sin. We were once dead in sin. Now we're dead to sin. And sin does not rule and reign over us. In brief, Paul says, we have to learn how to live up to what Christ has done for us. We have to give up ourselves to him and live up to who he is. And this simple principle of Christian living is more powerful than all the rules and regulations that men can devise. It is not what I follow to do so much as did I yield my life over to Christ? Did I die to me in order that I could, he could live in me? And unless we rid ourselves 
of all of the allurements of the old nature, there will be little room for Christ. We have filled ourselves up with things of pleasure, things of, our, of this world, things that we want to do. And our thoughts are not toward Christ. And if it's not toward him, it will not be toward our fellow men. Oriental Greek and Roman religion had very little to, or nothing to say about personal holiness. For the basic structure of those religious systems was based on the sacrifice that was offered to their gods. A person would bring sacrifices, they would say prayers, and they would go away from the altar and commit the same or even more terrible things than they've done before. And nobody would think that they were inconsistent because there was no relational requirement against them as God has against the believer. Since we have died with Christ, what happens in Christianity? The new life within us demands a new life outside of us. Because this new life of Jesus is living inside of us as believers, there is something required on the outside. Since we died with Christ, we should put to death we should mortify, as Paul writes. We should mortify impure behavior. We should mortify the lusts of the flesh. And baptism becomes the symbol of our death to those things as we have risen. If there are some people that, as the old saying go, went down in the water as a, as a dry devil and came up a wet devil. We ought to be sure that when we've given ourselves in symbolism to rising up in Christ, we're not the same person we were before. For Jewish people, baptism was a, an act by which non-Jews converted to Judaism. It was the, the final removal of Gentile impurity. However, we need to understand, once they turned back, once they, their life turned back to paganism and sin, and, and, they, and they, they, the vow that they made to God, that they were leaving that old life, they, they, they lie to themselves, not to God, because there's a commandment. We become a new person when we turn to God. We become new creatures in Christ Jesus. A person who has become a follower of Jesus gave up their old life. Again, self-denial, self-giving. We give up that old life through participation with his death. Paul says that our death to the end of life in sin should be evident, which was crucified in Christ. It is a, it's an accomplished fact. It's not a, a theory. For those who would trust what Jesus did, we are crucified in Christ. We give up living the way we used to live. The Bible cautions us against that. The way the unsaved crowd lives their life. For Christ is now our new life. He's in his new life giver. When he died, we died with him. When he rose, we rose with him. Now, this life should show forth in our daily life. So in this Lenten season, as we're talking about giving up, giving up, self-denial, self-giving, Paul writes in Colossians 3, verses 8 through 11, he compares the new life to a change of clothes. He says, put off the old sins as you would take off a filthy garment and put on the new life of holiness. Beloved, that's where we are. This old life that we once lived, gone, in Christ. And look at what he says in his list. And I know you're probably looking for some horrific list. This is what he says. Put off anger. Put off wrath. Put off malice. Put off blasphemy. Put off filthy language which proceeds out of your mouth. Even in verse number 9 he says, Stop lying to one another. Since you have put off the old man with all of his deeds, since you gave up that life and have given your life to Christ, those things should not be a part of who you are. But notice something. We are able to do this because in Christ we have put off the old man. And in Christ, the body of flesh, the sinful nature, has been put to death. We put it off through his true circumcision of the cross. Jesus gave his life. He gave he self-denial. Jesus self-giving. He gave his life in order that we might have life. Physical circumcision to the Old Testament 
meant entering into a covenant relationship with God. And you and I are now in a covenant bond with God to carry out his mandates. So in this Lenten season, it is not just giving up food. It is not just giving up going to the movies. It is not just giving up whatever other thing that you want to give up to show that you're holy and righteous. It is self-giving. Giving alms, giving to help others, but then giving things of our own lives that are detrimental to us maintaining a positive relationship with God. Our spiritual circumcision in Christ means that the old nature has been put off and we now walk in a newness of life. And this theme of giving, we have Minister Sean Bryant is going to continue with our conversation today in this ministry of giving and how you and I are to learn the principles of this Lenten season, though we don't put the ash on the head. The principles are worthy principles for believers. Let's get, let's, let's greet Brother Sean Bryant as he, as he comes. Good morning, uh, I'm Minister Sean Bryant, and I'm going to be speaking on Wednesday noon, Bible Essentials, the season of Lent, and my topic is going to be giving. Let's start with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you, we ask your blessings upon us as we uh, seek your word, we seek your guidance, continue to mold us into the image of Jesus Christ, that you might receive the glory, the honor, and the praise. In your name we pray and give thanks and ask your blessings. Amen. Amen. Giving. As defined by Noah Webster, 1828, giving means to be bestowing, conferring, imparting, granting, delivering. And also in the noun form, it is the act of conferring. So I looked up the word confer, and it also means to give or to bestow. But I thought there was something missing in this definition. Couldn't really put my finger on it until I searched the scriptures and seeing what the word of God has to say about giving. In John's gospel, we may only catch a subtle remark if we breeze through the passage, but Jesus states that there is a distinct contrast on giving, a night and day difference. The topics can come from John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The word give is spoken three times, but each time it's the same word. I believe the word is didomai, 1325 in concordance, and that means to give or to bestow upon. And I had to look all the way down to the seed definition. And it says, spoken of a person who does anything to or for another. One from who anything is received. The source, author, or cause of a favor. Benefit to anyone. To give, grant, permit, present, cause. Jesus says, his giving is not to be compared to or the standard of giving as defined by man or the world. If we look at Luke 14, 12 through 14, then he also said unto him who was invited, who invited him, when you give a dinner or supper, do not ask your friends or your brothers, your relatives, nor rich neighbors, lest they also invite you back and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. For you shall be repaid at the resurrection of the just. So we see that there's a contrast between what the world says is giving and what God says is giving. And if I hand you and I give you something, I say, here, I'm giving you this. But, oh, what is this? Oh my goodness, strings attached. That is how the world gives. If we sit there and we give out 100 Christmas cards during the holidays, 
and get zero back. Then we get an attitude. It's not how Christ would want us to give. This is how the world gives. Giving with the expectation of return, a favor, or something to be gained, possibly at a later date or time, no matter how small. Or giving to attain attention, admiration, or praise. If we remind someone that we gave them a gift, all of those things, it's not giving. It's called lending. True giving has no expectation of return. It would be impossible to measure or list the things bestowed upon us by God. We don't have enough years left in our life to list the things given to us by Christ. Acts 20, 35 and 36. I have shown you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak, and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had thus spoken, he knelt down and prayed with them all. Here Jesus is conveying that we have something to give to another. Anything we have to give to another, that we are blessed. To be in that position. The ability to aid someone who is in need. Remember, there's always a person who has it worse off than we are. Having the capability to give is in itself the ability to serve our Lord. Matthew 25, 33 through 40. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then the king shall say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and ye gave me food. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee hungry, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. We are given things which we have taken for granted by the God, by our, or by our God. The next beat of our heart, our very next breath, our very life given by God. Acts 17, 24, and 25. God who made the world and all things in it, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth life, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. Even when I came in today, a lot of things that God has given us, feeling the sun or the cold air, looking up at night, seeing the moon and the stars, all given by Christ. Jeremiah 31, 35. Thus saith the Lord, who giveth the sun for light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, who divideth the sea when, it was, when its waves roar, the Lord of hosts is his name. How about the time you ever felt despair? Did you ever feel defeat? Maybe the feeling that loser hung over your heads. Also remember Christ has given us victory in him. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God who giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Have you ever made a bad decision? Maybe some not so good ones. 
poor choices. Well, God states he can give us wisdom. James 1.5 If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth to all man liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. How about when you were ever weak, and you felt like you couldn't take another step? You're ready to give up. Isaiah 40.29 says, He giveth power to the faint, and to those who have no might, he increaseth strength. Also, Jesus gave us redemption through his shed blood. Titus 2, 13 and 14. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a people of his own, zealous of good works. And also John 10, 11, where he says, I am the good shepherd. The shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. And also remember that the Father gave us the Son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus has also delivered us from this present evil age. Galatians 1, 4 and 5. Who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil age according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So we should all give thanks to all that he's done, for all that God has given us. Psalm 75, 1, Unto thee, O God, do we give thanks. Unto thee do we give thanks. For that thy name is near, thy wondrous works declare. And 1 Corinthians 16, 34, O give thanks, unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Jesus has given us so much. And all it requires us to do is that when we give, give without expectation and give wholeheartedly to all those we come across who are in need. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you, we thank you for all you've given us. We can't properly acknowledge you enough, we'll come short. So we just say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for giving us this day. Thank you for providing the food on our tables, the roof over our head, the jobs that we have, the present health that we have now. If we're able to get up and go around and take care of ourselves, that is a blessing from you. Truly, 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 we are grateful. Thank you, Lord Jesus, and keep us for thy name's sake. Amen.